If you want to try a porter and you're not into porters, I would start with this one and note the acidity of it. And if you want to get into a heavier, uh, beefier little bit of a porter, a little more multi section, um, I would definitely go with like a founder. This founder's one. Hey guys, I'm Marcus, and I'm Jay, and we're, we're the, the Brew, Brew guys. guys. So, how's your week going? Had a pretty good week. It looks like uh, hear that? the weather report was saying that it looks like winter's probably over. Polar <laughs> that vortex is away. That would be okay. Away. That would be okay. It's been a little chilly lately, so I have to go to a Michigan basketball game. You did. You did. And and pretty primo seats from what I heard, <laughs> which is great. Best seats I've ever had at the basketball game. Yeah. Did you get? Uh, did you actually get like? I think I got sweat. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, good. that's pretty close. Yeah, that's good. I heard Jawan telling the ref what he thought about it. So yeah. That's great. Oh, that's cool. I'm not that's the only one who gets angry with him. That's cool. I like that. <laughs> How about your that's, week? Yeah. Yeah. Doing good so far. Uh, busy as always. So it'll be nice when spring gets here. We can probably do more of this and a touch less of everything else. And outside. Is, and outside. That'll, That'll be, outside. be a nice schedule for sure. That's exciting. So we have a couple porters. Couple porters. Yeah, so that. I'm just gonna be straight up honest with everybody. Right when you say porters, porters <laughs> are up. my least favorite of the beers. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it is about them. Marcus I don't know out. what it is. I love stouts. I love brown ales. Right. Porters. Mm. Well, we have a little bit to talk about when it comes to that too, because there's some disagreements, obviously. So there's always been a debate. This is one of the oldest styles of beers in existence, right? Mm -hmm. It's actually Arthur Guinness. This started Guinness. This, this style, even though Guinness is technically a stout. Um, so there's a lot of history there. Uh, we won't bore you with a ton of it, but just know a few things. Um, the guidelines, which we do have pulled up, there are technically three types of porters. So you have a British porter, or an English porter, a Baltic porter, um, and an American porter. The only part that gets a little foggy <laughs> is that there is such a thing as a robust porter. And both of these will qualify and are considered robust porters. Does that mean it's a chubby porter? It is. Well, this one is definitely chubbier than that one, but <laughs> yes. Uh, so a robust porter just means it has a heavier grain bill, essentially. So more malty, more malt bitterness imparted without adding hops. Whereas a typical American porter is going to be typically embittered with hops, and a lot of American porters have um, a lot of additives, coffee and things oh. like that, whereas a Robust is pretty much trying to use its grain bill and its maltiness to do what it needs to do. So would you say it's almost close to like a stout without the, the goodies? It, it is. Um, I would say that's fair. Uh, one of the things that makes a stout a stout is either to bitter black malt or black malt itself to really darken it and uh, add some more malty bitterness. Um, so there's always been that question of stouts versus porters and is there a huge difference and some people love the little bit more wateriness of a porter, some people love the heaviness of a stout. Um, so I think maybe that's what I don't like. Like if I'm yeah. gonna have something like that, I just give it to me all. Right. I want it all. I want right. all the flavor. I don't right. need a little water. Yeah. You know, and porters do have their place. It's it's difficult to either kind of love them or you're just eh about them. Typically. Can you drink these on the beach? Absolutely, sure. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of conversation we could have here, and without getting everybody bored to tears. Well, I'll um, tell you what, though. I like this little saying back here on the founders. Yeah, they like to put sayings on theirs. Dark, rich, and sexy. Yes. And it is. I think uh, it's been a while. I, I'm actually pretty excited. The lady's not very sexy. No. It's been, a, it's been a while since I've had either of these. Uh, quite a while, actually. And I don't even know, I mean, that I don't think I've ever had the dryness in the no, finish. Had so the it's more dry okay. in the stout. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's you get into a dry stout. Um, so, uh, just, sharp character from dark roasted grain. So, we should have not it be dialed overly in. Accurate. run through so the we actual have the acidity flavor. and weird so bite at the aroma, end. we're not really worried about. We know harsh finish. It may be dry hot. It's a lot of things. Fruity esters. That's from Belgian cancer. Things like that. We're going to get real deep if you have brewing stuff. Um, dry hot at the end of the day, which these are not. Moderately these strong malt flavor, under the robust, uh, lightly burnt malt character, under that. grainy so, dark malt um, dryness, yeah, there's a finish. lot of stuff so to say. There's a lot of words. There's a lot of things to say. Uh, sharp character from dark roasted grains should not be overly accurate. So these are. 
are so two of the top borders in the in U.S. They both have to be from Michigan, finish, so but under the like rope. No, <laughs> no. Um, you're going to get resiny if you have um, dry hop and things like that, which these are not. So these definitely fall under the robust, and they will both be marketed under that. So, um, yeah, that's a lot of stuff to say. That's that a lot of words. That's a, a lot, lot of things to words. say that they are porters, and they're just a little bit higher grade bill. So these are two of the top porters in the U.S. They both happen to be from Michigan but under the robust porter. So if you look up American porter, you're gonna see things from like, uh, yeah, there's a few good ones out there that are just a straight up American porter, but they're gonna be higher hopped and things like that. So this should be a nice baseline if people wanna get into a porter. Uh, these are typically pretty well distributed, so especially in our state of Michigan, but they do head out all over the place. So this should give a pretty good baseline as to what a solid porter is. You go ahead and crack that one for us. I'll put this one in the back so we can still take a look at it. Now, with porters, mm -hmm. are they better warmed up a little bit like a stout? They do open up like a stout, change, absolutely. they change flavor with warm? They do, sure. So these are worth zapping and getting a temp on. Um, you should get a nice, we want that, what I call gravy head, because it does look like gravy to me. It's got that tan, um, almost looks like it's on nitro even when it isn't. Um, but you should have some pretty good sized bubbles. So that's a little bit of a difference from a stout. Usually a stout doesn't get, you don't get those big massive bubbles on top. Um, so, yeah, see what kind it of... It smells good. Oh, shit. I, that's head, but that's still pretty cold. 48. 48. Call it 48. That's about right. I'd like to think, think that's open. We can zap it again once the head the breaks down. It is down. beautiful. It is. It's very solid. Um, and obviously, I don't have a strong light, but, I mean, this is pretty much jet black. Can we use my cell phone? Right? No, it's okay. It I mean, you, me. if you if you do put... If you do put a light on it, you're going to get a slight brown and even a slight red on a porter. Whereas you may get that with some stouts, but you shouldn't get too much of it. Otherwise, there's you know, know maybe not enough. Stouts. Yeah, you're going to get this that little red hint. So um, let's give her a smell and see. You already said it smells good, so let's see what. It smells nice. Okay, so very malty. Ch I get like a chicory, a little bit yeah. of burnt sugar. It's it's not heavy. It's not overpowering. It seems a little I, smoky, but not. Maybe. Maybe it's the yeah. chicory. Yeah, that chicory, that kind of it fake kind of coffee. Like sweet smoky. There is a there is a inherent sweetness to it. So, I think that's really nice. I think that's what you want from one. Um, the smell makes me want to drink it. So that's a positive for a That's very good for you. Absolutely. Good job, uh, what, what would you want to give that on an <laughs> aroma? I like it. I'll give it a three point seven five. Okay. This is where I get extra harsh. <laughs> no, I, no, I think you're gonna say you're gonna get extra high, yeah. extra higher scores. No, this is I, that's a three and a half. I think that's where it should be. I, it, I maybe I would it get some. It is what it is. It is what it is. Special, but, but it is what it is. It is so what I'm it saying. is. I agree. Are there porters that smell special? There are. You know, you can get a dry hopped porter. Uh, we dry hopped a beer that we made oh. lately, so it's really if you're trying to hit the classic style or whether you want to try to do some wonky stuff okay. um, and also if you were doing obviously if you were doing a coffee porter you're mm -hmm. going to get a much better smell but do you want it or not is up to you uh is up to you so i think that appearance wise i think this is just fine um so i'm going to appearance wise i'm just going to give it a straight four because i think it's exactly what it's supposed to be what do you think it looks like a dark beer so i'll also give it a four okay it did its job. Yep. The At the end of the day, what we really need to do is that uh, we should drink this. Find out what we really think. So I think it's good looking. I think it smells good. So cheers. cheers. Mmm. Mmm. That's a porter. <laughs> Such a porter. Okay, so immediately coffee without the coffee, right? Yeah. You get coffee without the coffee, which bitter. is a really neat thing you can do with I mean, roasted barley, different yeah. levels of roasting. Um, I like the bitter back end. Yeah, it's got it's some bitter. hang time. Oh. So there's uh, black malt in there, I'm guessing, and probably some debittered as well. Uh, but very, very dark, very roasty, um, warm, not much sweetness. The finish is not sweet at all, No. which is exactly what... There's zero sweet. Yeah, we were told. There's no sweet. Um, Do the flavor. Okay. What do you think? It tastes like a porter. It does taste like a porter. It didn't change my mind about porters. Right. But, as far as porter the goes... The flavor to me is a three. Okay. 
I just, I'm not, I don't right. drink coffee either. So right. Yeah, you know, you just, don't. That's yeah. not my palate. And I drink coffee in the morning that's black, and then later on, I'll, if I want a treat, I'll have coffee, uh, cream and sugar in it, so. That's um, your treat? Your yeah. treat is coffee with yeah, cream and like, sugar. Yeah. yeah, I like that. It's nice. Jay's treat. living the life. <laughs> I do, Ooh. I do, uh. I do get a little white girl wasted now. Guess what, guys? Sorry. It's time for <laughs> coffee time for with coffee. some creamer. <laughs> Everybody gets real excited at work with <laughs> any excuse to stop working. Do you get a fancy creamer, or is it just cream? Like, is there no? Flavor? Yeah, it's like yeah, it's fancy-ish. It's got some fanciness. Yeah, I girl it up pretty good. So, if I, I get some caramel creamer, in this it would probably be real good, right, for you? Probably. So I think this is. Pretty dead on to what a, por a robust porter should be, or an American porter. So I'm definitely going to give it a three seven five because I think it hits the mark. I feel bad giving it a three because no, just, it's, it's a, I don't. It's this, not my. This favorite. is. I mean, yeah. it's good. It doesn't. It's not horrible. If you're going to cut it down anywhere, it's going to be in the flavor because what you're looking for is essentially on the other three characteristics. Does it hit? Does it hit the guidelines? Is yeah. it what it's supposed to be? And then for the flavor, it's kind of your opinion, you know. So on mouthfeel. I think it's got a very elegant, nice mouthfeel. It does. I like it, too. I think the head soft. is good. It's very soft. Pillowy. Yes, very pillowy. I am going to maintain my 375 on that. See, I'll give the mouthfeel a 4. Okay. Because I do like that. Yeah. Good to know. Good that to and know. the smell is the best part of it to me. Right. Right. So, of course, the big question, right? You're checking this on untapped, and I know you're not. I know you're not gonna be going after this. But say, I say, hey, we need to have a couple porters, and you say, okay, I'm in. This is not an awful porter. No. If I was checking on untapped, I would give it a three point two five. Okay. There's only one. I think it was a porter. There's only one porter I've ever had that I really enjoyed. I think it was like an oyster porter. Mm. I am going to give it a straight three and a half. I think this is what I it's what I want. It's what I think it is. It's what it should be. Not so, spectacular. Not no, bad. I think it, as far as just straight porter goes, this is very good. Again, I would love to. I can't seem to get my hands on it too often because it's I don't know. They don't send Anchor Steam or Anchor used to be Anchor Steam, Anchor Brewing Porter out this way too often. Um, it's been around. Sometimes you catch it. It's usually way too old though. I would love to. Which is shocking since the Japanese InBev bought them. Well, no, it's Sapporo, but. It's not, the, they are kind of the Japanese in that's true. Um, Japanese blast. But I would like to Mexico. I would like to do like a straight porter comparison because I really do think that's what porters are supposed to nope. be is that one. I've never had that. As long as they don't mess it up and, you know, when the, with the new owners and stuff. But I've never had that one. Yeah. So we're at a straight 70 on this one. Fair. And I think that's, that is what it is. So I think we, we like it, obviously. It's good beer. I would certainly order it if it was on, um, compared to other things, I would certainly order it. So... Yeah, this is good. I would order it if we were only in a bar that served porters. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we haven't had this one, but maybe not. Maybe. We'll see about the Bell's one. So, beer number two is Bell's Porter. All right. Uh, Founder's Porter? Bell's Porter. Um, yeah, let's pour this one. I'll let you do it because I don't have a bottle opener. You can do that. So. Here, you pour it. I'll okay. Open it. All right, perfect. So. I like the little lines. That's fancy. Yeah, they changed their uh, stuff a couple times. Okay, immediately... That head looks way thinner. Than thinner. Anymore. I will say this Not is a dark. little bit thinner, a little bit dark. I get a lot more brown. The the head is even. like The other one looks caramely. This one's yep. closer to white. That is interesting. I just want to see if I can get it to fluff back up, but it's not going to... It's got a good sound, though. There it goes. It fluffed up a little bit. So... Yeah, immediately, and I can, I'm already seeing brown at the bottom, just from the light. Oh. So, I see, I already see a color difference, I'll just say that. Yeah. It is. What do you think smell-wise? It does not smell as good as the other one. It smells... It smells... Light? It yeah, smells... It smells blah. No offense to... It's got a little bit, I get one. a little crispness. Very crisp. Um, it almost has an ale-like smell. I can't get my face close enough to it. I get an ale-like smell. I That's can smell just a touch of the alcohol. I can smell... So what would you give it the aroma on that? Two? Okay. I give it a 275. It's not um, nothing there. 
It is. Two, I thought two was being generous. I'm not sure. <laughs> so it's always hard. So like, if we started, if we started with this one, and then you had the aroma of this one, it mm -hmm. would like blow your socks off. Yeah. And then kind of this way, it's a, it's a little it's deflating to this one. Um, and the so this down, this immediately weird. makes me feel like it's a American porter. That's mm. much more an American style porter without the additive, without the hops, things like that. Just a straight up one. Uh, so what do you think? Two on? and a half. Like the head okay. is sad. <laughs> the head is the the head is doesn't have a, as much legs. It's got a little more foamy texture, which I'm I'm going to assume, immediately assume from the appearance of this that this is going to be a little more acidic, oh, okay. and less malty, or more of an ale or brown ale style. Or I something. do not have my hopes up. I, <laughs> Marcus is not excited. <laughs> no offense to bells, but this is well. Let's try it. Let's see how awesome or not awesome it is. Huh. Wow, it tastes way better than it smells. It does. It has a lot more punch to it than I thought it was going to. I does. actually like that flavor better than the other one. Really? That's so weird. I think the flavor is good. It's Beer, you're so weird. It's much lighter. It is lighter. I think that's why I like Definitely it. Definitely not maltier. Um, no, it's... I can taste a little sweetness in this one. A little chocolatey, maybe? Brighter, uh, higher... I'm going to say higher, a slightly higher acidity. Yeah. Definitely... Probably from the um, carbonation, higher carbonation rate. Definitely higher carbonation rate. This is more of a, I will call just like a straight up traditional porter in my mind. This is when I think American porter, I think this. So if it was over hopped or had coffee added to it, it would be an American porter with additives. And so this definitely reminds me more. I'm surprised that these are both marketed as robust porters. This definitely hits the mark as a robust. This definitely They're way me. different. Hits the mark for an American. Yeah, way different. So this might not be a completely fair comparison, but we're not trying to go head to head necessarily. Are we really warmed up that far? Apparently, it's like a sauna in here. <laughs> it is warm. <laughs> I did have the door open too. Um, flavor wise, what do you think on this? I'll give it a three point two five. Okay. Um, I I'm going to give it. A, a two and a half. Well. <laughs> I like robust porters, so I think, like, I mean, this is good, but I also have, it's not fair. It's probably not fair for me, but I, <laughs> Kalamazoo Stout is a great stout. Like, I think mm. it's it's probably a great stout just to, like, people that want to try a stout. Like, this yeah. is a really good stout. I think Kalamazoo Stout, which is by Bell's, um, is fantastic. So I want it to be closer to that, which okay. may not be fair. But if we're talking, if we yeah, are truly saying, stout. if we truly are saying this is a robust porter, then this is not a fair comparison. No, they're not even close to the same. If, or, well, it is. It's, and if this is not a robust porter, which I don't feel it is now that I've reintroduced myself to it, um, I think this is definitely not necessarily a fair comparison. But So for that category, I'm going to say this is a little light for me. Mm -hmm. But I think mouthfeel, I think they hit it. Just fine. I think they have it's good, good acidity, good carbonation. It's probably a hair over primed for me. I like it a little smoother. It's very bubbly. It's very bubbly. Um, but I'm not going to be mad at this if I wanted to, if I wanted a porter in the summer or something like that. I'm not well, going to be mad yeah, at this. I can drink this one this summer. Um, so I would probably say on mouthfeel, I'm going to probably say it's a three two five. I'm going to say three and a half. Okay. And of course, the big question. I'm gonna go let you go first because three point five. I want to think. I want to think about it for a minute. That was too fast. Three point five. What am I going to check this in on? Untapped. Two point seven. No, I'm not gonna be that bad. I am going to check this in as three nine. I'm gonna check it in as what did I check it in about three and a half. I'm gonna check this in as a three. This, this could be a good gateway. Both of them could be done correctly. But as far as a direct comparison, I don't think this is real fair. Man. No, I agree with what you're saying because I think it's funny. You look at these scores, and if I was in a bar and these were the two beers, I'd get this one. Yeah. Yeah, that's, and, and that's just, are we, what are we, we're market, or we're judging against yeah. the, the profile, right? Yeah. So that doesn't mean that this beer doesn't, hit the mark for some for a lot of people exactly that's what i'm trying to say yeah just yeah. because like me i'm not a huge porter fan right this could, don't always go on what the 
professionals yeah. say. All right, yeah. Because everybody's palate is different. Absolutely. So you would go, th this is a great comparison of, you know, Marcus and I. So say the only two beers in here that they that we could order in some place were right. these two. I'm definitely going to go for the Founders. And I'm He's definitely going to go for the Bells because it's what he likes better. And I think that's, I think that's craft beer in a nutshell. I think exactly. it's fantastic. We want to have those beers for everybody to try and, and gateway into other things. So Well, it's, it's funny. We went to my brother-in-law's who's kind of starting to, I know he likes beer, but he's starting to get more into it. I took him a couple of homes to try and stuff. Mm -hmm. You gave us the rhubarb. Yeah. From, uh, New Glarus. And mm. What's he going? I like that he watches our videos because it's important to know. Just because it's high rated mm -hmm. by some people doesn't mean you're going to like it. Yeah. Where some people might think it's not that fantastic, but right. you're going to pick it over things that are more high rated. Absolutely. Everybody's different. Yeah. You just got to try stuff, find out what you like, yeah. and branch out from there. Well, and that's the, the other thing, too, is, is when you get to know other people. So one of the greatest things is there will be people... Marcus will pick out beer for me, knowing what I like. He'll say, "Oh, you would love this when it's it's this, or it's that." If he had this, if he had this one, and I wasn't there, he would have been like, "You'd have loved it. <laughs> You'd have loved it. You should you should get it." And uh, same goes for me. If I find a double IPA or something that I'm like, "Oh, that's a lot," or I I like, it. I'll know that that's for Marcus, or I'll know that it's for other friends, and I'll say, "You should try this. No. Um, definitely okay. think this you hits your get palate." Your hands on and this. And that's the that's the key. We thought that maybe um, your brother in law would like this one beer. Turns out he he the did old strawberry. Yeah, loved he, it. He did. Um, He's a big wine drinker. Right. So, I mean, that's that's the thing. Having not just you looking for craft beer, but having other people look for you is mm -hmm. very very helpful because once people understand what you like, um, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you know all these opportunities open up. So, mm -hmm. so uh, good. Uh, Good little review here of porters, uh, especially Michigan porters. Uh, I was a little surprised by this. I was kind of wondering which way this was going to go, huh? but it does open our eyes up to maybe that's maybe this is a perfect example of why the guidelines are the way they are, and there isn't such a thing as technically a robust porter category. Although you can huh. check them in and rate beer, untapped, and all those um, as a robust porter. I don't feel that these are a fair comparison. If they're both under robust porter, I don't think that's fair at all. Mm -hmm. If this is a standard American and this is a robust, I think that's fair. I probably would actually give this in rating probably because of that. Yeah. So, you know, that's just, it is what it is. So one other thing we want to do real quick is I'm going to see if my macro works and see what the rest of the world thinks. Actually, so we are kind of congruent so the world thinks uh founders porters in 81 which that's pretty nice rating for a plain uh just porter uh 75 on the bells which again i think you're gonna see some of that difference from the fact that it's not a robust porter in my opinion oh. so real interesting I, I do like to see the congruency and it looks like um the averages across uh rate beer untapped and uh beer advocate pretty much agree with us to a degree so yeah, I, well, I actually have probably told myself I'm going to keep more of this around. I like it better that way. I like it's taller. It's, it's taller. Like short, it's, it's short and squatty for me. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Um, we're gonna head out. Uh, we have lots of big stuff coming out, coming up down the pike. Uh, hopefully, uh, you saw our homes live little trip. That was a, just a tremendous amount of fun. It was fun. Uh, it, it was cold. cold. It was fun. <laughs> cold but it was a lot of fun so if you haven't watched that one uh, go ahead and click on that and check it out we got a lot of things coming up in the future uh, please hit our link tree and hit our instagram all right well i don't have any beer to cheers with you oh, so yeah, still cheers i'm like kind of just we don't have anything left cheers but... cheers <laughs> to you